my dear friend, can you hear Steven. me? Steven. Hi, Steven. How are you? I'm great. Wow. We we both have very we both have very uh barracks looking places that we're we're uh, recording from. I yes, I, I'm in I'm in a bunker, actually. You look like the the sergeant or the captain or the colonel, and I look like the private. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you made your bunk a little better, we could talk. <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know, what we should do a revival of Biloxi Blues, and I'll play. You can play the uh, Christopher Walken role, and I will play the uh, Matthew Broderick role. I think that's an appropriate cast of characters we could do <laughs> you almost just knocked me over with that <laughs> how are you brother how's the family I, you sound everybody's like everybody's good steven um you know we're weathering the weather and uh all is good you know um let me take you full frame so i could see you there you go now I get to see the full Stephen Lolly. There he is, all of his glory. Yeah, you know, um, aside from, uh, you know, I'm healthy. You know, there's been some heartache and strife and all that. But aside from all that, everything's good. Okay, everything. so you guys are able to get your things you need and no, none of your property is, there's no, nothing's being burned down around you. No, no, nothing except when I leave the toast in for too long. That's our only issue if I, uh, but yeah, yeah, everything's, you know, pretty safe around here in, in uh, Culver City. Everything's all right. Um, no issues, no issues. But, it's, we've had uh, protests and things, and I uh, went to one, and that was very, it's a lot of the young people are getting very involved, and um, they're out there, and it's fantastic, fantastic. Beautiful. I, I'm, you know, so I'm very blessed to be a completely safe in the pandemic time because I'm in a place where there, I don't think there was even any recorded cases of COVID out here. Where are you? I'm in Playa. Oh, wow. Okay. You're like 15 yeah. minutes from me though. Right. But it's kind of like a different world. It is a different world. You know, it's, a, it, it's not even 15 minutes, dude. It's like seven well, now. minutes. With well, no now, right, because there's no there's no traffic going out to the, the ocean, right? No, you could we could beam there. You know, I could beam there in like twenty seconds or something like that. You know, this this is a beam right here. We're, yes, we're in a we beam. Are. I am beaming there. I'm yeah, beaming this, there. We could we also speak. do a Star Trek revival. I will do the Nimoy, and you can do uh, Bones. I yeah, I'd love to do Bones. I uh, that would. <laughs> I I really rather get B check off though. Really? Was that that yeah. was what you kind of related Captain, to? Captain, I can't get any more out of her. You know. The pornographic version of that would also be very, very entertaining. <laughs> There's nothing I can't get any more out of her. Come on. <laughs> that kind of man. That that's that's Warp some serious. Speed. <laughs> Warp <laughs> speed. <laughs> <laughs> that's that gives new meaning to the term Klingon. It does. I know. Klingon could have been a dating reference if uh, Star Trek hadn't gotten it first. Yeah, I know. I, I, yeah. One goes out with a girl, and you're like, wow, how was it? Nah, she was a real Klingon. What? She was still there in the morning. You know, you know. <laughs> sorry for the delayed laughter. Yeah, but as I'm processing, I'm thinking of my own. It's not that that wasn't hysterically funny, but no, it's but funny yeah. that we immediately apply that to the woman being the Klingon and not yes. the man as, as we know, uh, I know as a man, I have been a Klingon. Yes. Uh, and males can uh, really be Klingons and especially now women, you know, will, will kick you to the curb. I mean, from what I know, I'm an old married guy. I have no idea, but from what you swing and singles guys tell me, um, I'm like, how was it? I don't know. She didn't call me back. You know, it, it goes That's everywhere the now. True swing and singles life right there. That what you just what you just described is the real singles life. It ain't Peter O'Toole and what's new pussycat. That's fantasy for the movies and TV. For and, you, and those of you out there that think it's all exciting in Hollywood. Yeah, and it's worse if like, well, what happened to she ghosted me. She ghosted me. Oh. She unfriended me. 
You guys have a lot to put up with, man. I, you guys have a... used to call it getting stood up. Right. Now it's called being ghosted. Right. I don't know which Which do you prefer? Neither. Like, changing the term hasn't taken any of the pain away. (laughs) But you, as Stephen Lolly, have never been ghosted or... Constantly, up, right? constantly, no, constantly, constantly. No. I have what to was fight the worst one? misogynistic the worst? tendencies. I've had to fight. I don't always have to, but I have had to. Uh, I'll tell you one story. What was the worst ghost thing? Yeah, what was the worst one? This is well, the worst. I can't, I probably blocked the worst ones out, <laughs> but I will tell you one that pops to mind that's the most interesting is that I met a woman at the Beverly Hills. uh, uh, By the way, real quickly, uh, my guest today is this amazing comic actor. He's the founder of Culver City Comedy. Go on. He's been in movies. He's (laughs) he's an OG. He's one of the original generation of the greatest generation of comedy. Uh, He's from Chicago. Chicago, Southside. Yeah, somebody else too. Uh, a few other people here. Yeah, are. and and a uh, great comic actor. He was in Flashdance movies you might have heard of, maybe. He was Bizarro George on Seinfeld. Mm. Just to go through a few, uh, he was in Runaway Train with Eric Roberts and John Foy. I mean, we get we get some serious real people here. Uh, yeah, actually, a really fun credit I have, which. Not uh, everyone saw, but it was a great series called, um, what was what, what was that show called? Um, Family Ties? Which one? Family Ties? No, I never did a Family Ties. I did a, uh, I did a, um, Who's the Boss? Um, but anyway, we'll think of it later. I'll talk. Anyway. About yeah. What, 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 I, I left out one major credit, right? What, oh, when, when Harry met Sally? You weren't when Harry met Sally. I was. Yes. Uh, yes, I had the wonderful line, decaf. No, I had a couple of... <laughs> One line is all that matters in a movie like that. You know, and my coach, I worked with my coach on it for hours because <laughs> it was decaf. Or you want to toss it away. Was it Henry yeah, Winkler? Who was your coach? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody got paid to coach. People get paid to coach just delivering one word. You know, yes, that's an amazing. I, I would guess. So wait, you're going to tell this, me about this dating? This series. is a horrible intro, but my my guest is Kyle. No T. worries. Hefner. No, we don't Please. need an intro. Yes, Kyle T. Hefner, my my Chicagoan buddy, truly a great guy. And now I'm going to tell the story about. Yes, now I'm going to tell that it was a horrible jackknife intro, but okay. We so, don't need an intro. Go ahead. I met this girl at the Beverly Hills Library. She was smoking hot, young, beautiful, womanly, womanly, mm. uh, Latin, mm. and she just was ready to go. Uh, I approached her, talked to her. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I, unlike 85 to 89% of the male population, have no problem speaking to women I've never met. No problem. I don't have any fucking problem. So if those of you are wondering how did this connection even begin, it's because we she was in my path. I said hello. She said hello. I said you're you're really lovely. And then it went where it went. So the girl didn't. Uh, she didn't. She get. She started sending me naked pictures of herself. She started talking hot and heavy to me. She was ready to go, man. Uh, I'm fast forwarding you know, the conversations we had, but basically it got right into it. And we made plans. We're going to get together. Right. So the day, day of the plans come up a few days later and I called her, I got this weird feeling like it's PTSD from being stood up so many times, but I got this weird feeling like, you know, I should just give her a call and say hi and and say, Hey, looking forward to seeing you later or, you know, whatever. And I did. She didn't answer. I left her a message. Hey, looking forward to seeing you. So it's kind of getting later in the day. The day's getting late and haven't heard back from her. So I call her again. Hey, just making sure you're not having any trouble finding the place or nothing. Didn't hear from her. Stood me up. Never heard from her. Nothing. 
So and at that point, I'm calling her and I'm, I'm getting angry, but I'm also like maybe something happened. You know what I mean? Because that's right. the thing. Our ego, we filter through our ego first. So after I yeah. had a minute, minute to think about it, I was like, well, maybe, fuck, who knows? She might have been in a car accident. Or... So I call her and I leave her a message. Hey, just let me know you're okay. So nothing. Don't hear back at all. So the next day, I don't know if it was the next day or the day after, I was so enraged because my expectations were so high because she's sending me naked pictures of herself. And I was are, excited. Are you, are you uh, actually, you know, are you doing the same thing or, or not? No, I, nobody oh, wants okay. to see a naked picture. <laughs> I don't have naked pictures of myself. Nobody wants to see the a homunculus midget Jew naked i can send pictures of my face that's the best i can do or clips of my comedy i have uh, used those yeah but again this is like it's like trying to use a it's like trying to use a a a a, a, a kite to to fix a fucking plumbing it's not it's yes, not an effective yes. tool or any of that so uh but thanks for asking so yeah okay um i, I let then i start getting angry i leave her a message listen Call me back and let me know you're okay. If you don't call me back, I'm going to take your naked pictures and I'm going to post them on Craigslist with your name and your phone number. And I'm going to tell people, you're, I'm a lonely woman. Call me for a good time. I need, I'm going to put you in men looking for women. And I'm going to, I'm going to air you out. So she calls me. She calls me back. I heard back from her, Kyle. Yeah. Heard back from her. She calls me crying. Please don't do that. Please don't don't put my pictures and I have a job. I could lose it. And you know, I'm I'm, I'm she's weak and I felt terrible. And I'm like, I was not gonna do this. I was just threatening you with it because I've been stood up so many times that I I don't even know what to do anymore. I feel like I'm in an alternate reality and I'm I'm losing my mind. You know, you're telling me you want to get and so she finally admits, she goes, well, I was afraid to call you and I didn't want to see you. So again, my, it's, this is years ago. My memory's a little foggy, but eventually I calmed her down. I told her I was not, of course, I was not going to post her info. And, you know, if, I'm sorry that I freaked her out. And if there's some way, now I feel bad. Now I'm apologizing, you know. So I'm like, is there some way I can make it up to you? Let me know. I called her a few times to follow up to say hello and make sure she's okay. And somehow, eventually, she ended up at my apartment, and she got in bed. I, you know, she got in my bed, and she we had sex all night. This is crazy, dude. And she liked it really rough. We I'm mm -hmm. not going to get into detail, but she liked it rough. Mm -hmm. Um, but she was very demure. She wasn't like a, didn't, you know, like not attached, not the kind of woman who, you know, who comes out and tells you she's dropping little clues about it. Right. right. So which are the, which are the freakiest ones, of course. And okay. then, um, we saw each other a few more times. We had a good time and I thought, you know, maybe this could be something. So she calls me up one day. And she goes, I go, well, come over. And she says to me, well, are you going to abuse me? And I said, no, I'm not. I like you. Why would I abuse you? I don't, you know. And I never heard back from her. And Kyle, all of this, she did this, all of this, whether consciously or not, she wanted abuse. It turned her on. Mm. And I couldn't, I don't have it in me. I'm not really, I mean, I'm playful, but I'm not, you know. She wanted, the whole thing with the ghosting was so that I would reprimand her. The whole, oh. I didn't and even you don't, it, didn't you process don't, it. You don't have a leather mask? and No, no assless chaps, no. I don't no. even have, I don't even have sex toys for women, dude. You don't have a ball gag? No. Uh, I can borrow yours? Yeah, I, it's, it's a little rusty. No, now that you're married, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, a, it's rusty. I don't know, you know, they when when I used a ball gag, they weren't even made out of plastic; they were made out of steel. So it, you know, it's rusted, and the leather, 
you know, is a little rotted on the sides. Do you, let me ask you this: Do you keep <laughs> it? Do you keep it stored in your in your green military compound file case behind you? Yeah, I do. I have. Well, it's it, it, everything's organized organized there. So there is a drawer there. Second one down, third to the left. It says ball gags, right over there. How many do you have? And is it almost like um? Is it almost like a like a family heirloom? Did any were any passed down? It is. Like, well, yes. Like an, old, one, like an old baseball mitt. Well, yes. Actually, when I was about eleven years old, I was sitting. I was visiting my grandparents, and my grandfather and I used to sit and watch, you know, baseball. And it was so great. And um, one day we were sitting there, and he brought out this kind of um, bag made of. Um, What's that really soft material like? Um, Wade? No, like a. It's not cotton, but like a, a plush kind of thing with a drawstring. You know, like the bag that liquor comes in, like one of those. It oh, looked like what a, a a velvet bag. A velvet bag, yes, a velvet bag. And he he two said, straight men. It took a long time to figure yeah. out the types of fabric. <laughs> That's how you know you're talking to two straight men or communicating. Uh, yeah. You don't understand. So, it, it was, I'll never forget, it was a blue velvet bag. And he said, um, son, he's my grandfather. And I said, yeah, grandpa, what? what? He said, I have something for you. This was passed down to me from my father. And I wanted you to have it. And I was Can you like, do oh this in God. the Christopher Walken voice, by the way? Because that yeah, would make he, it like so fiction. My, grand, my grandfather handed me a blue velvet bag. And he said, son... This is for you. It was given to me by my father. He carried it in his ass. They carried it in his ass. The gooks, you know, <laughs> they tried to get it from him. They couldn't. <laughs> they couldn't get it. So he handed me this bag, and, and uh, I opened it, and I, I didn't know what it was. And he said, you don't have to know what it is now. The knowledge will come to you when you need it. It was very, very mystical, very spiritual. Very Eastern. Yes, very Eastern. And so it wasn't, you know, I think I was maybe 14 or 15 when I realized what it was for. And he, he allowed me to acquire that knowledge on my own. It was a, kind of a rite of passage. Incredible, like a walkabout sort of. Yes, it was. Yes, it was like a walkabout. So that, exactly. was your, that was your, 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 uh, your sort of um, inherited ball gag. Yeah, and that one is that one's a little rusty at the moment. That one, you know, um, you need to you need to give I that some tender loving care, Kyle. Well, I ha I had taken it to this uh, refurbishing place out in Van Nuys, and uh, they did they did a pretty good job, but it did you know it still didn't hold up. But they, but they, but it was just refurbishing. It wasn't they didn't specialize in ball gags. You know, you got to get the ball. no. They they refurbish ball gag. That's their. Oh. Ball gag refurbishing. They didn't get all the rust off of it. Yeah, they they got a little bit. I didn't want them to use. You know, they have to use a special paint that's not toxic. So I had to make sure that uh, it was a non toxic paint. So no one would have an allergy. Exactly. Um, and I I said make sure that none of these paints have nuts. You know, because there are a lot of nut allergies out there. Well, especially if it's a younger person who's using the ball gag. Um, you know, they're they're generally people who are millennial. You know, if so, if you're you're handing this to a younger person, it could. Yes, and I, and I was younger, although you know, back then when I was younger, there weren't as many nut allergies. There were very few. It, it's I, there's been a preponderance of nut allergies. I think in the last twenty years. And when we say, when you say nut, you mean actual nuts, not uh, jism. No, yeah, I, I'm referring to a peanut. Just making sure. So, or an almond. Yeah. Or a walnut. Do, right. Or macadamia. Nobody died from jism. <laughs> I mean. Did you, have you run into people with those allergies that are allergic to uh i've i've run into many women who are allergic to my bodily fluids i uh, yeah and i can I, tell before any bodily fluids are exchanged yeah i bet do they do they have an epi pen with them you know maybe it, you should carry an epi pen <laughs> you <because> know <laughs> no but the, the ball gags now come with the epi pen included they do oh oh wow okay yeah i've been out of the loop so long 
I don't even know what you young like Rob swinging Reiner guys and sleepless in Seattle. Dude. Yeah, I don't know what you young guys are out there doing. I mean, you know, you guys are getting crazy out there. It's crazy. I mean, are you doing all the apps and the? Uh, is there? Is I there like an? To, listen, is there I like a, a, I'm no. I'm nobody to ask because I'm not at a. I don't have an affluent sex life. But oh, okay. I also don't have a problem meeting women in public. Uh, oh, that being said, I also live in a place where it's like remote and I'm, I don't have a car. So it's not like I'm, I think really my best dating life is through Facebook. Really? Facebook, women reach out to me. They get to know me through Facebook. And then I've actually been laid a few times through just communicating through Facebook, man. Wow. You must get a lot of likes. You know, for a, a, a couple of posts and then they disappear. Yeah. It's, it's ah. just, you know, I don't, I don't retain uh, my, my fan base, unfortunately. And then you, you meet Casper. Yeah, yeah, I get ghosted later, but at least <laughs> you, get, you get the action before the ghost. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. It's like, so, am, I, am I, you're going to change my name to Casper now. No, I'm just, I'm just curious, Stephen, because I, I don't know. Now, as a young single guy like you, good looking, funny, successful, now, where is the best place? I mean, I, you know, like if you were going to meet, because you can talk to women. Anyway, I know you have the gift. You've got the gift. Where do you go? Where would you go? Like if a guy said, show me the ropes, Stephen, what do I do? Where do you, where do you take it? I, I mean, do you, want the, do you want the serious answer? Yes. Yeah. I think the best place to meet uh, somebody who's sane, because... If you don't want to, you could just meet anybody uh, and you're using these apps that people use. It's going to be a tremendous amount of time consuming for a very little return. Okay. Okay. You really want to go for quality. You got to meet a woman in church or in synagogue. Mm. I think. I think you got to. The problem is not a lot of attractive young women show up to places like that. So, well, aren't there special services where uh, they cater to, to the young and attractive? There, there are supposed to be <laughs> things like that, but um, the things that I've shown up to have been particularly awkward socially. Ah, right. Like, I think there's something when it's almost like if you were to say, "Hey, we're having a get together for watermelons," where it's just we're going to have a watermelon party, right? Uh -huh. uh, then people show up and there's no, there's no um, insecurity about meeting somebody because you're just showing up for the fucking watermelons. But if you say we're having a singles meetup, everybody shows up and they're like, feel like a fucking loser. Cause they're I like, see. you see, see what I'm saying? That's just right. like psychology behind right. it. Here's a meetup for you fucking single asshole losers. Right. who Obviously can't find somebody and are pitiful. Right. So it's better if we're getting together to play Uno. Um, yeah. Clue. Uno night. Clue. Yeah. Now I, you know, I, you know, now, you know, I'm an old married guy. And to me, like, I couldn't imagine like going to like a strip joint or something because to me, like having a, you know, a 19 year old gymnast, you know, writhing around, I think I would need medication or, you know, I, I would have sore muscles afterwards. You know, I don't need much. I, d I don't need much. I mean, just to engage yeah. in fantasy, Stephen, I don't, I don't need that. And, and I just wanted to, what I do just to engage in, you know, everyone needs a fantasy life. Um, I, about 5.15, I go to Whole Foods and I try to find uh, Look at the women with the with the with the yoga pants on. Yes, I find a, a an age appropriate um, woman in yoga pants, and I wait till one smells of vanilla because that I like that. I like so. It's pretty I, frequent it in LA to find that. It, at a whole it time. takes me a minute. It takes me a minute. I have to trail a couple of them before I find a vanilla, and then you know, and then I just kind of wander behind and and. Um, pick essential oils and, and, and then I'm, I'm very happy. That's it. I'm good. I'm good. But, but I've known many, so let me, let me pay you this yes. kind of a, a compliment and this is sincere. I've okay. known many married people. I am, I am, you say I'm young and, and single and I, 
whatever. But I mean, I'm old enough to know a lot of married friends, to have a lot of married friends. And of those guys, you seem like one of the guys who sort of kept it together. Like you seem like one of the guys who's who's like you're making me spit, spit my <laughs> you, tea. You you have like kept you have like retained or maintained whether it's an illusion or or whether it's real. You appear to have maintained a pretty fantastic level of identity and soul, uh, considering the uh, the, the soul sucking aspects of married life. <laughs> yeah, or just generally the, 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 what the effect it has on the male, uh, the primitive effect, the, the, the primitive man, uh, and the effect that it's, I've seen it to my dad, my uncles, you know, and, 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 and many guys who I have known, uh, and they're all good guys too, you know, I'm not, I don't want to put them down, but um, yeah, you seem to have kind of uh, made, I, I'm just wondering if you're even aware of that. Well, um, my wife's not home, that's why. <laughs> I think I just knocked something over. Hold on. Everything's okay. Wow. And that and that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call good comic timing. That was good comic timing, and I don't mean me pounding on the wall. And I no, and I said to her, I said, "Look, I've got to do this thing with Stephen, and um, I wondered if I could borrow my testicles." And so, you know, they're they're on a loan out program, so she let me have them for an hour. I don't know how long is this an hour ten or something, an hour. So I've got them, and um, so I where are they? Here? Are they in the Are they in the green ca uh, filing cabinet? Over yes, uh, second Under down. Uh, balls Three, and ball two. gags. Right, exactly. Right, they're they're alphabetically labeled. They are. They're right. They're right over in there, and I could show you, but it's too disgusting. Um, but I don't. I don't actually. Yeah, I did, I just get to have them with a in a close proximity to myself. Um, but as soon as this is over, you know, back they go in the safe. You know. So. Well, you know what? You never know. She might end up. She might find something to do and stay out for a while. I know things could get crazy. <laughs> they could get crazy. You might now. Does she give them back to you for your trip to Whole Foods, or you, uh, yeah? Well, is that I, like I a do birthday know. Birthday present, I like do, a once a year thing. I do know the combination to the safe. So if I need to, you know, I'm speaking sotto voce. Because... We will. Uh, we will try to <laughs> censor this out of the uh, the podcast, just in okay. case. This shouldn't be broadcasted publicly. I don't want you to right. lose any freedoms. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Just, you know, snip, 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 snip. So, um, yeah. But, uh, yes, I, 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 am, I am able to access them uh, remotely when I'm in uh, Whole Foods. Yeah. Pretty technologically savvy guy for, a elder, for an elder fellow. Yeah, well, you know, you got to keep up. You got to keep up. Um, but I, I do know, I know what you're speaking about. And, I, you know, it is, it is interesting because it's, a, you know, it is a, a constant um, battle. But, um, you know, it's, it is, it's, uh, you know, it is a, it is a one act play in, in 30 years or less. Uh, you know, it really is. It's, um, do you think creativity has kept, because I really do, I, I mean, I'm, you know, I know we're kidding around, but I really, yeah. you seem like you've done good. And uh, again, you know, I, I think it's a, an adorable uh, image of you following around the scented candle lady, the age appropriate scented candle lady at the Whole Foods. Yeah. That's yeah. a sweet and adorable uh, description of a, of a good old married guy. <laughs> but um, but I, I mean, something you have maintained some sense of self that I think a lot of other dudes, you know, co-sign off. Uh, and um, I'm wondering, well, if, I, yeah, I think maybe people, your creative life too has contributed to that. No, it, I, I would think so. And you know, I get to hang out with cool people like you that are creative and keep me on my toes creatively, um, which is uh, which helps a lot. And um, I was curious, what do you see? Like if you say, for example, one of your childhood friends, okay, 
they get married, and you're going to start to see the signs of their soul being removed from their body <laughs> and, kicked in, and kicked into the street. Now, what, what's the first sign you see? What, like, what is the first time when you go, you, like, you go over there and you see him and whatever, and you walk away and you go, damn it. It's gonna. It's starting. It just started. What's the first sign of that, Steve? Um, to be honest, Kyle, it's different for every one of them. Okay. Um, but some some have some of the signs are literally a friend saying to me, "Don't ever get married." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> stay single as long as you can. Yeah. That's a pretty blunt. You know. I, yeah. So I'm not even. This is before I'm even seeing anything. Okay. All right. You know. You're getting a heads up. You're getting a warning. Um, but but like one sign is um, people who seem like they've got it all together and then they get belligerently drunk and uh, you know the 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 truths the truths come out the the unrest comes out uh, at when they get belligerently drunk at the Christmas party or the uh, you know the you know reunion or whatever. Um, uh, Another thing could be, um, and, and these aren't even, I don't think the worst marriages. I think these are just, this is just generally how it is. Um, and of course there's my own, my own parents who are great, but you know, I watched my, my poor dad who, you know, it's a, you know, you're, he's an Italian guy from Chicago and, you know, eventually he just, uh, you know, he had a woman who was a dominator and, you know, he got, he got, he got, uh, I, you know, again, it's not, it, things could be worse. I'm sure his life is good. A lot of these people's lives are good. I just uh, um, got to think of, you, you kind of stumped me because I don't really, one buddy of mine got very, very, very conservative. That was one. He got oh. very, um, it was like, I've known him for a long time and He's a guy who was like all into art and culture and entertainment and comedy and and then he and when he got married he started sending me messages like uh, you know I, I, something about it was something about Eddie Murphy and he was like you know we don't we don't uh, we don't think that's appropriate and I was oh like, yeah they start everything it's never I anymore it's we right yeah that's a big sign that's yeah, a big that's sign that's a good point that's, that's a, good a good sign point. that's a big sign and then. Um, one would also be if you go, hey, man, like if you said, hey, Kyle, you want to go? Let's go out and have a beer. And I go, oh, wow, that sounds fun. Let me ask mommy. Now, that would be a big. <laughs> oh, here's a sign. When a friend okay. calls you up now, because you, you got I had to really process this for a minute. OK. When yeah. a friend calls you up and goes, hey, what are you doing, man? And you're like, well, I'm at home. How are you? Everything OK? And your friend goes, hey, um. Can I come over? Can we just hang out for a few hours? I need to get the fuck out of the house. <laughs> and you feel like you're taking somebody who's gotten a, a prison, like has been released from the penitentiary just for a period of time. And they may, they may not want to go back in their allotted period when they're supposed to return. Oh, that's hysterical. And do, do they require a big hug? Like when they get there and, what do they want to do? They want to just, just, just company and conversation. And as actually, it's one of the easiest things I've ever done is to hang out with a buddy who had to get out of, you know, who just wanted to, again, these are people who are still married and, and happily, I think relatively happily. So this is, that's what the horrifying part. These are the, like the best case scenarios. Right. Right. So. Yes. Well, yeah. Every, anything with, you know, to, um, people um i'm very fortunate because my wife is uh she's she is very strong um physically mentally and spiritually um and she's she's very bright um so uh every day is is a challenge um <laughs> <laughs> she's a bright person <laughs> you, you fucked up there <laughs> you fucked up there oh man Oh, that was really unnecessary. So there, so there's no time to, um, you can't, there's no lollygagging. There's no time for mental lapses um, because, you know, you, you know, you've got to really be on your game. Um, or, lollygagging, by the way, is my pornographic alter ego. 
<laughs> Lollygagging? Oh, well, my last oh, name's okay. Lolly. Oh, that's right, Lollygagging. That's okay. Have, you know, <laughs> I you love just, it. I love you, that. You do all kinds of funny things that you you just. <laughs> It's just part of your gift. That's why you continue are to work you, in Hollywood. One of the are, reasons. Are you? Uh, is do you, does lollygagging have its own Instagram page? No, but yes. I did write. I did write a script uh, yeah. called lollygagging, and it's, <laughs> it's a um, like a uh, uh, it's a it a, it's a series of of pornographic Marvel superheroes who all have intersecting stories. One's an Indian guy. There's a transgender one named Marsha Gay Hardon. Um, there's a, uh, yeah, lollygagging is me. Yeah. There's an Indian guy, Indian porn. You know, it's, it's a, yeah. Wow. It's a, is that, has it been optioned? No, I'm not. Not yet. Not yet, no. Not but, yet. You know, all that has to happen is people think you're important and everybody, people will buy shit you wrote down on a napkin, you know. They're like, wow, do you hear lollygagging got a green light? <laughs> You almost did a little Christopher Walken there. Uh, I did, I yeah. Christopher Walken to say that, you know? Yeah. Um, lollygagging is going to I'm get attached. Home. I'm attached <laughs> to the lollygagging project. I want the title role. <laughs> so one thing, uh, yeah. viewers out there, I want to share with you about Kyle, because we could just go on with this goofy shit forever, and I would love that, but... One of the things about you, Kyle, that I think is so cool, um, being from a community of people, I mean, we're both from Chicago, so we both grew up sort of in middle America. Would you say that? Did you kind of grow up in middle America? It was uh, almost in the middle. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, we're different generations, but, you know, I think I kind of grew up around, I did not grow up around creative people. Ah. Generally speaking, and I don't just, I don't mean kids, other kids. I mean, uh, adults, nobody was really creative. Uh, and you know what, one of the things that's so cool about you to me is that you have cultivated this group of really interesting, creative friends. I mean, you have, when, when, when you were doing Culver <laughs> City comedy, <laughs> oh, 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 oh shit. I don't want your wife to. You know, may, you just tell me afterward, and we'll we'll be. No, go ahead, go ahead. I, I'm sorry, I'm just teasing you. Yes, go ahead. Uh, just a great creative group of friends who are really bright and interesting, and I think that that's one of the things that I imagine would be the most cool thing about moving to LA was that there's artists and writers and musicians and actors and you know. Um, and there's a lot of assholes. There's a lot of pretentious assholes. But you seem to have really cultivated a community of really cool people. And who wouldn't want to be your friend? Because you're a, a really good guy. Yeah, and they know what's in my little gray filing cabinet over there. Um, uh, four down, two to the right. Uh, the um, Well, I <laughs> don't open the fifth drawer. Five down, two to the left. Um, well, when I was, when I was young, I, I uh, like 11... Um, I, my parents put me in a children's theater. So, I mean, I was just a kid going to school, whatever. And then I started, I wasn't doing Christopher Walken, but I was trying to do impressions and, you know, Jimmy Cagney or whatever. Um, so, and so they thought, well, he seems like he's acting or something. We don't know what he's doing, but he's trying to make us laugh all the time. So. So at 11, I started uh, in a children's theater, um, which at the time was the oldest children's theater in the United States and had illustrious alumni. Um, Dick York really? was an alum of this children's theater. Mel Torme actually was, uh, the Velvet Fog was an um, uh, old Velvet alum. Velvet Fog. Yeah, that was his, uh, Mel Torme's nickname. Um, but anyway, there, I started going there, and there were kids from all over the city, um, every socioeconomic group, and um, I. several of them are still great friends of mine. Uh, my friend Rico Walker, we were a comedy team. He and I met when we were 11 years old there. And um, we, there were all these creative people you know, all these kids from all over the city that wanted to do plays and, 
you know, do stuff like that. So I met all these kind of wacky kids that just wanted to create and do theater and do stuff, you know? Um, so I was very lucky, um, to have gone there. And then when I went to school to college, you know, and I, there were a bunch in high school as well. Um, um, and then there was a, a lot in college. I mean, that so was, we had a totally different, so it's funny. We were just, you were uh, encouraged and, uh, from a young age and put in, you had this community since you were a kid, basically. Yes, was, that's uh, true. Right. And I, on, on the other hand, uh, while my parents did have creative things around, mm -hmm. but when I decided, it's funny, I was just thinking of this on a bike ride the other day. My father was the one who brought all the best comedy to the house. George Carlin, mm. Pryor, Murray. I mean, all of the shit of that era, the 70s and 80s. Steve Martin, all of me being there. Peter Sellers. I mean, I was watching shit kids in my generation weren't, didn't, weren't even exposed to. And then later on when I was like, you know, I think I, think I want to be in doing that. Oh, wow. And I remember the reaction being, this was not, this was just so you would be a cultured, well-rounded person and we would, we could be entertained at the same time. This was not for you to, what the fuck? Don't, we don't, we don't know what you're doing here. This, this isn't is law school. For this, us. Is, this is not for This us. is just to keep you entertained before you go to law school, right? Is that what that's not? What no, there wasn't. I mean, I, if I never law school, with, they didn't even, they didn't even have, no, they never encouraged anything specific. It wasn't like they envisioned I'd be in law school. They just, yeah. they were like, not that anything, but this is not, people don't do that. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, I, I think I was very fortunate in that I, I was the third child, okay? So, and I think I was a, I was a oops baby. I was a whoops baby. Um, my mother admitted that to my wife before we were married. And, um, and then the, later my mother changed history. She, she told me, she said, because she realized, oh, maybe that wasn't a good thing to say um, that I had always thought, but my mother had finally confirmed it that I was a, a whoops baby. But, you know, the idea that my parents actually sat around and, oh, yes, I, darling. Uh, <laughs> you have a child. Yes, darling, I think, what are you doing? We've got two children now. Uh, sh sh should we have a third? Should we have a third child? Yes. Yes. We'll call him Kyle. Yes. So now let us go to the marital bed and perform our duties to bring forth another child into the world. Um, so um, that didn't Oh my God. You, you need to do that on stage, man. <laughs> Stage, so that stage is returned. You need to. You need to really. That, that is so funny. I never. I've never even heard that. That's like such a who. That's what we think of all our parents that they planned. Right. No. And until we were born, and then our generation were the heathens and the hoodlums who just went out. No, it was you know in in between you know I was conceived in between drunken stupors. I think is actually what what happened, and then a then there was a. Oh my God, I've, I'm, you know, my breasts are sore and I'm throwing up. And then there was a trip to the doctor and a tearful ride home on the bus, you know, <laughs> you know, I, it, it, you know, man, I, I don't even, I can't even think of my parents like that. So I, I, I appreciate to the depths, to the, 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 the depths that you're, you're able to imagine your comic depth. Well, now that I, you know, now that I am a parent and Oh, uh, that's it. Yeah, I see I am a parent and I mean the one good thing about, you know, my daughter's 28, my son's 22 and um the one thing about like being long time married and having children is you actually do give your parents a break. Cuz you uh, you realize this is fucking hard, man. It's all so fucking hard. And you, you know, because when you're young, you're like, oh, fuck my parents. Yeah, blah, blah. When you go through it, you're like, oh, oh, you could have told me. You know, you could have <laughs> told me. You could have slipped a note into that velvet bag with the ball gag, you know, and given me a heads up, you know. <laughs> Mel Torme. 
with a velvet ball gag. That's what that's oh. what I'm I'm oh. getting <laughs> images of. Mel Torbay, what was he called? The 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 Velvet Fog. The Velvet Fog with a Velvet Ball Gag. I actually I, I actually was in his I think I did see him perform at the bowl many years ago, back in the eighties, but I I was in his proximity twice. Okay, the first time I think I had gone to a matinee of Porky's uh, back in the 80s, and Mel Torme came in by himself um, with a large tub of popcorn, extra buttered. I remember he was wearing a track suit, like a red zip-up Adidas track suit. So I thought, that's either Mel Torme or a drug dealer. I'm not sure. So he, he sat there, and the other time, actually, was the coolest time. I had always wanted to go see Woody Allen play clarinet at Michael's pub in Manhattan. And um, we went, my wife and I were dating. We were in New York. She was from Connecticut. So we'd go in New York and do things. So we went to Michael's pub. He used to play on Mondays clarinet with his band. Sure. And so we got tickets. We went and sitting at the bar, I walked past him, the velvet fog, Mel Torme. And I didn't, I wanted to say, hey, we were in the ch same children's theater, but you know, I, I didn't was want just going to gonna ask you, did you, yeah. do you, how could I you? Know. I know, I know, I, I you know, when I've you tried drop to, the ball gag, I know, I, <laughs> when I've tried to do that, like I, from my high school, I went to a very small parochial high school, and the only super duper famous person that went to my high school who is much younger than I am is Common. Ooh. Common, the rapper. Common, I thought you the said actor, Comet. No, Comet. Like Comet, Comet Lixen. No, the, no, the actor, songwriter. Com Common, okay. Yeah, Common. So one day I'm at the Geffen Theater seeing a play, and during intermission, I go, oh, my God, there's Common. I'm going to go over and tell him we went to the same high school many years apart. It's a small school, so, you know, it's, it's pretty rare. But I, I went over, and he was uh, having a really deep intellectual conversation with, you know, probably the head of production at Warner Brothers or something. And, <laughs> I, and, <laughs> and he was wearing a scarf, you know. And so I should, when I saw the scarf, I should have realized. Rappers should not wear scarves. He's not. And the, yeah, when he's a rapper a, starts wearing a scarf. Yeah, he's an he's an everyman, you know. He really is. A, he's he's a renaissance man. He really is. But he had a scarf. But I so I I went over, and I was uh, I went to a school called Luther South, and the name of the team was the Braves. You know, so um, uh, maybe not too socially acceptable, but that's what the name of the team. Was. Anyway, I went over, and I was like, "Go Braves!" And they both kind of looked at me. Like, okay, should I call security or not? And um, I said, oh, oh, uh, we just went to the same high school, uh, not the same time, but, and they're still kind of looking at me bewildered. And I just kind of backed out of that situation. And they went back to discussing his three picture deal. So I, <laughs> so I, I didn't have a lot of luck with those kind of yeah, things. Yeah, you were, you were, it, the timing was really wrong. Uh, yes. But you made Bad up timing. for it today with the timing on this podcast. I would say just with the timing of mentioning your wife was out, and that's why you had your testicles made up for any kind of <laughs> dropping the ball gag. Yes. Like Common or Mel Torme <laughs> or any of those funny, other funny, 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 funny. And yeah. how are you doing, Stephen? Are you you're doing I'm great. Okay? Thanks for asking. I'm actually doing really well. I, you know, I feel – uh, bad to say I'm doing really well, but um, I'm very grateful that I'm, you know, I have this show, which just fell in my lap. This, it's funny how the things, things just fall out of the sky on you and the things yes, that yes. you work so hard to, to, to uh, procure come to, you know, you spin your wheels and come to nothing, uh, creatively speaking in our profession. <clears throat> and, um, I could be really, really in bad shape if I didn't have this show. I get to talk to you for an hour, right? We, we were supposed to have another guest who didn't come, so, but that's okay because you and I get to just bullshit. This is the well, easiest. Fuck that guy. This is the easiest. 
the easiest. You know what he wrote me? He said, I can't be funny right now. The world, oh. the, the events of the world have got me down. I was like, yeah, you know. It's, That's true. It's, it's, That's true. I thought about that. And then I thought, well, it's Steven. We're really good friends. And we both know the reality of the situation and what's going on. And we're both deeply affected by that. But we don't have to do that today. We're doing it 24, hour, 24 hours a day. Yeah. We can take one hour off today. You know my comedy well. You've seen I do. You stand up many times. This is the opposite of my comedy. It's an easy, lighthearted thing. Um, you know, we, it can go wherever it goes. It's something I can do in my sleep. I get to talk to my friends. It keeps my mind sharp. It keeps my mind sharp. We don't have stand up now, and my yeah, mind you should you should interview my wife. Your brain will be very sharp. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't, I specifically tried to, uh, tried to, uh, <laughs> actually, does she want to come in and photo, but we, we've had a couple video bombs. Is she, is she, there? oh, wait, oh, you know, I could get a guest. Wait, I could get my son to say hello. Okay. How about that? Yeah, I see someone. Hey, Colin, working. Colin, come down one sec. He's been lifting weights all morning, but. Colin? Is, yeah, there's my son, Colin. Co Colin! Hey, Steven I've seen Lally. pictures of you on social media where your dad is very proud of you. Oh, he can't hear you. Um, he's just here. Just say hello. How's it going? Hey, man. Your dad's really proud of you. I s <laughs> yeah, the, that's nice. <laughs> he's constantly advertising your accomplishments on social media. Oh, I, I bet. That sounds like my dad. We all follow your life. Uh, it, it makes me grateful that my parents didn't have social media when I was young. Because I would not right. have wanted to be on a comment board. Oh, yeah. It's like being under a microscope. But, you know. Yeah. I He's love my dad. Though. You got a hip, you got a hip <laughs> dad. And we appreciate you uh, video bombing us. We, we, we needed a little extra company because he and I... You know, he and hey, I you're two only... interesting guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll let you get back to it. Thank Happy you, Colin. Happy to be on here. Thank you. Yes, man. Thank you. Hey there. Hey. Yeah, that that's a nice my commercial break. Yeah, thank you. That's my 22 year old son who just uh, just about finished with college. So we did it. We're done. I've been following that. You get, I've, your, your social media is in my algorithm, dude. Oh, I, I know, great. I know your, uh, you know, your family pride. <laughs> so one day I will have that as well. One day I will meet a woman who's way too intelligent and I will make a mistake <laughs> of settling down with her. Uh, I'll be attracted to it at first, but like any prey is lured in to a uh, um, and, and, and devoured. Yes. Well, you know, and just think about when my wife and I first dating were first dating, there were no cell phones, so I actually had to carry a thesaurus. You know. <laughs> Kyle, seriously, I want would, would you give us some some single some of us single people, would you give us some wisdom when we're seeking uh, a partner that's going to be a long-term thing? Uh, or not seeking, but you know, uh, give us some wisdom from your uh, your experience. <laughs> <laughs> what things to do, or, or what thing, what things to not do? <laughs> Maybe some things not to. Well, work. you know, I don't, I don't know. I I think because it's it's a very subjective thing, and um, all of us have different needs and different desires. Actually, what I think it is, here, here is actually the key. Um, the, the main thing is separate toothpaste tubes when you get married. I'm a roller. She's a squeezer. So anyway, but the, the, the actual thing is, um, is emo an emotional vocabulary. Now, what you want to do is make sure that the person that you think you want to spend the rest of your life with does not speak in the emotional vocabulary that you are used to with your family, but may not be best for you. So a lot of times people pick someone 
because this is comfortable. I'm used to this because that's what their home life was like as a child. That may not be the best thing for you. Make sure when you are picking that person, their emotional vocabulary is one that enhances you. Give us, can you give us an example of the emotional vocabulary? No. <laughs> Ask a comedian for wisdom. That's what you get. That's what you get. No, yeah. it's totally subjective. You know what your emotional vocabulary is. I can't, I can't settle down with a woman. i tell you this right now. I would never settle down with a woman I wasn't in love with. Even if I fell out of love with her, I'd have to be at least lured in by being in love with her. Yes. To some degree. Um, yes. That's so, good. Have, yeah. you been, ever been, have you been in love recently? I have. Yes, I have. Uh, well, re when you say recently, how, how long do you mean? Uh, decade or so? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, I have. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, there are a lot of wonderful people out there. There really are, Stephen. And um, I see them. I see you. And I, I see them at Whole Foods frequently. Um, you smell them. I do. They're always buying essential oils for some reason. I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, I'll do, I'll do vanilla. Occasionally, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll opt for a patchouli. But, you know, usually... <laughs> Has the era of yoga pants complicated things for you? We've had a couple conversations. It has. It has. Um, it's complicated a lot. Uh, and um, it's made me actually go back to yoga class. So, um, because then I can, I don't even have to go all the way to Whole Foods. Real quickly, what was yoga yes, class like in the early days before the break? Uh, yes. Well, I was doing... I, <laughs> It wasn't on Zoom. It was actually, I was actually going to a yoga class. It was uh, the Iyengar, which is the slow and you're concentrating more on the poses. It's not flow. It's like the opposite of flow. And I was in a, um, um, I was almost the youngest guy. I was the, I was the young boy there. Was this in the days of flash dance and. Oh, you mean like, oh, you mean in the eighties. You mean back. In I'm the wondering, 80s. I'm, you said a young guy, you were the young no, guy. No, I mean, I mean, I mean before, um, COVID shut down my class I was attending. Oh, I was still the, I was the young guy. I was the young boy in this class. It was a very mature class. No shit. Yeah. What are you saying there, cowboy? Anyway, <laughs> it was a mature <laughs> He was doing elder yoga. I was, um, it was a mature class, and um, I, I sometimes felt like a piece of meat. I did. Um, I really felt I would not be in the front of class because I, I just felt the eyes on me, I, you know, undressing me, you know, and it was uncomfortable. I'll share with you real quick before, <laughs> before we go. Okay. Uh, a, a, a woman at synagogue, seventy-year-old woman at, at the synagogue. I, I, you could very, you could tell, a very beautiful woman, very, you know, uh, erudite, lovely woman. And when she was young, she was probably she was even a, a nice-looking older woman. But in when she was young, I'm sure she was a beautiful woman. A knock. And I remember one day I was doing, I'm standing outside. And I would always say hello to her, and she, she came up to me and she said, you know, you are a very handsome, nice-looking man. You're a very <laughs> nice-looking young man. And I can tell you that because I'm an old lady now. Young women will never tell you. <laughs> we're, we're not supposed to tell you that, but I'm telling you. You are uh, very, and, and she said, when I was young, I wouldn't look twice at you, though, because I only dated men with money. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. So anyway. she probably, she probably put three of them in the grave, I bet, and, uh, and lives up on the hill somewhere, right? I'm not, you know, no, 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 I, no. No, I don't think so. She she had a she had a wild fast life, and then she you know like a lot of people settled back down into reality as she got older. And whatever happens when you get older, I'm I'm not quite there yet. 
Did she? But, um, uh, has she ever offered ever offered to bring you a casserole or anything? Um, she washed my sneakers for me once. Oh yeah, the casserole's coming. That's that's like right after washing the sneakers. Yeah, that's step two. Kosher casserole. Yeah, Kyle, Kyle, brother, I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, this has been awesome. Seriously, oh, thank this you, has Steven. made my day so great. And Mine let's too. get together thank in person. You. Why don't you come to Playa and have lunch with me? Soon? It's all of uh, five minutes, ten minutes. Well, I could ride my bike. It would be like twenty minutes. Please do. Um, please that do. would be real. That would be really fun, Stephen. It's great to see you. Thank you for uh, inviting me to your wonderful no idea zone. Um, hey, and you got to we, Where can we find you? Where can the audience find you if they oh, want? I'm I don't mean physically. I mean oh, you know okay. in the virtual world. Why are they looking? I, five o'clock at Whole Foods uh, in the vanilla scented candle section. Five fifteen essential oils. Um, I'm uh, Kyle T Hefner is my handle on everything. Kyle T Hefner two Fs. Hugh Hefner only had one F because he lost. Yeah, I think he lost an F in the war. But um, I have two Fs. Um, so I'm Kyle T Hefner at everything. Self branding. Instagram, Facebook. He's my friend. If you're my friend, yeah, you can find him. He's my friend, and Come you along. gotta find this guy. Follow him. Tr you know, check out the stuff he's doing because he's funny and he's been in some really cool shit. Well, you can find me on the Twitter too, if you want to. You can find me on the Twitter, Kyle D. Hefner at the Twitter. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no idea zone. This is another <laughs> episode and we'll see you guys soon. And uh hey man. Peace Thanks, out. Kyle. Till next time. <laughs> All Til right, next Steven. Time.